Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I count it as a privilege to handle the word of the Lord. Uh, time and chance, they are given from above to introspect ourselves, to understand what is going on and to understand what is the will of God concerning our lives on this earth. So it is very much seen. Each and every situation and each and every circumstances God permits. And out of that we are able to grasp or understand lessons for us. And the psalmist says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. And test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way, wicked ways in my, in my heart. Lead me in the path everlasting. Lead me in the way everlasting. So that, that should be our prayer, particularly in this uh, time, the time of perilous days. These are the days we don't know what is happening and what is going to happen. But we know in whom our future lies. And uh, we are expected to please the one who holds our life. So whether we like it or not, we have to go through strifes and sorrows in this world. Because Jesus said in John 16.33, In this world you shall have to go through trouble and tribulation, sor sorrows, grief. And he said, if you are filled with my word in your heart, you will overcome this world. Because I have overcome this world and I have paved the way for you to overcome this world. And situations compels us to come closer to God, to understand what the will of God is concerning our immediate, concerning me and my immediate family and the society at large, what is happening. Because God will never hide anything before he starts. He made everything known to his people who are earnestly seeking his presence each and every moment, day and night. So every one of us are going through grief and sorrow. Whether we like it or not, it has become the part of our lives now. How to get rid of all such agonies the neighbors are going through, our own immediate family members are going through, our relatives are going through nowadays. What is the role we supposed to play as Christians redeemed by the blood of Jesus? We should understand. And the, there are many things which disturbs us in the society. We are affected by the, by the things that has troubled us and it produces grief or sorrow. There are two kinds of, two kinds of grief or sorrow. Worldly grief and godly grief. The title I have chosen today is, for today's meditation, whether worldly grief or godly grief. The grief we have in our mind, in our heart, whether it is worldly, it, it is based on the world or worldly values or based on God and godly values. So Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. My soul is very sorrowful even to death. He said, he shared this, his concern to his beloved disciples whom he chose, the 12 apostles. He wanted to share. Sharing plays a vital role to release the burden. So Jesus started sharing to his disciples. The greatest moments. He was greatly distressed and troubled. Jesus was greatly distressed and troubled. Why? Because of the sin. Not sins of Jesus. He is a sinless man. 
complete perfect man, son of God, sovereign God, creator. At age he became, he was used as an agent of creation. So he is, he in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed with grief and distrust heart. He was troubled. The greatest moment of agony the world has ever seen, we, have, we could see in Jesus prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. Isaiah 53, 53, 3, it says a man of suffering familiar with pain. A man of suffering. Jesus, why? He took all our infirmities and diseases on the cross. Whether contagious diseases or the infirmities. He took all the diseases on the cross by himself. To release us, release the humanity, we don't need to carry the affliction, carry the disease or sickness anymore. If we believe, if we believe, he bore our sins and he paid our price. We supposed to pay and he has paid and he has settled our dues, our debts and he has set us free. Have we ever thought of that? He has undergone the agony in his soul. He took everything and he has freed us. He has set us free. Isaiah 53, 4. In order to forgive our sins, Jesus took up our pains and bore our sufferings. So he has become a substitute for us. God has made him a substitute for the sinner. And he has taken all our sins and trespasses from us. In Matthew 6, 25 to 34, it is seen. Jesus said not to worry about worldly things, food, shelter, cloth and other things which is other requirements which is based on the society, based on the livelihood. You don't need to worry about that. Why? Pagans run after all these things. Pagan, people from other um, faith or other belief. They run after all such things. What do you do? Understand the will of God. Why it is happening? Why God allows such things to happen in my immediate family? What am I supposed to do in this critical situation? What is the lessons I learn from God who is allowing such things to happen in my life and ministry? Why? We need to discern. Like, like David says, search me, O God, and test me, O Lord. If there is any offensive way, if there is any wicked way in me, Forgive me and lead me in the way everlasting. So if we, we are well versed with many things, secular things in our, in the world. But at the same time, we are expected to be trained with the word of the Lord. The word of God itself is life and it gives life. And the circumstances, situations compels a person to be sorrowful. No one can say that uh, I am always happy. I don't commit any sin. I am uh, completely a happy man, happy or woman. No one can say like that. The matter is whether it is godly sorrow or worldly sorrow. We don't know our uh, life span, how long we are going to live. And what we are going to do out of the experiences we had in our life, we will come to a conclusion that nothing is in our hands. We are prepared to inherit the eternal kingdom. And that's how we are commissioned to pray unto God, Lord, let thy kingdom come. Let thy name be hallowed. So we are commissioned to see God's kingdom. And we are expected to uh, see the will of God, understand the will of God, discern the will of God, what the will of God concerning my unmarried daughter, unmarried son and uh, the person who is not uh, uh, getting the right employment, what is the will of God? We need to sit at the feet of Jesus and to, to understand 
in order to understand his will we need to sit at the feet of jesus so this um, to define the godly grief or worldly grief i have taken few characters from the bible let's see how it is defined the first one chief cup bearer and the baker chief cup bearer and the baker who were there in the paros uh, citadel paros palace as the cup bearer, cup bearer and the one the man one who, one who feeds the paro baker two of the assistants in the palace of king of paro the cup bearer and the baker offended their master as they were in the duty in their duties and fulfilling in their duties and responsibilities they have once offended their master offended paro the paro was deeply hurt and the king of egypt was furious with his two officials the chief cup bearer and the baker he was uh, angry with the two of his officials assistants consequently the king put them in the custody of the house of the captain of the guard he put them in prison and in the same prison where joseph was confined joseph was also put put, put up in prison due to the accusation the plot the conspiracy made by the fall finders in the lives of joseph in the life of joseph so he was falsely accused and he was there in the prison joseph was there in the prison with this chief cupbearer and the baker joseph was assigned to attend this uh, prisoners the people who are in the prison he was given the position according to genesis 40 57 as they were in prison they both had a dream chief cup bearer and the baker they both had a dream and the dream was illustrated by this by the both the people to joseph because interpreting dream is it belongs to god so joseph the man who was filled with god and shuns evil so he was uh, prepared to interpret the dreams that had been dreamt by this two people who were in the prison and uh, he said i uh, genesis 40 13 the dream troubled this two people the chief kabira and the baker they were restless and they have lost their peace of mind having this dream and uh, they were trembling with fear what is going to happen next what is going to happen such a way the dream was illustrated to these people who offended paro and uh, what is, what is happening this uh, genesis 40 13 he said joseph said within 3 days king will lift you lift up your head your sorrow will come to an end he is addressing to the chief kabira within this 3 days within 3 days the king is going to restore your job he is going to lift up your head and you will be replaced you will be restored like that he said and accordingly it happened and uh, coming to the baker's dream joseph said within 3 days the king will execute you on a pole you are going to be penalized you are going to be executed so this dream this dreams came to true after some time so these two people both were grieved one was rescued and the other was re- released even in the second coming of our during in the second coming of our lord jesus christ one the two people will be staying together one will be taken up another will be left out so we need to be cautious in that the two, one of these two was released and one of these two was penalized so second corinthians 7 10 says godly sorrow produces repentance 
Godly sorrow leads a person to repent from his sins and trespasses. And salvation, it, it then further leads to salvation. But the worldly sorrow, worldly grief will lead a person to death. Whether we are filled with the worldly sorrow, worldly grief or godly grief, it is up to us to, to decide. 1 Samuel 30 verse 6 David was greatly troubled and greatly distressed because the Amalekites has uh, uh, taken everything that was that belonged that belonged to David. Even the household were captured, and uh, he was he 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 he, he, had, he, had, he had lost all his strength, and eventually people spoke. Of stoning David because the soul of all the people was grieved but David found strength in the Lord in that prevailing situation if we are filled with the worldly grief we are able to we are we are uh, directed to instructed to sh shift the worldly grief into godly grief David was, of course, was troubled heavily in his heart and soul. And he just turned his trouble to upside down. He, he, he turned towards his head, he turns, turned his head towards God. Lord, I want to recover everything. What should I do? He started sitting at the feet of God. And he started... No, he was wanting to know the will of God concerning this to resolve the grief whether it is worldly or godly and he found strength in the Lord situations where we stay around around us many turbulent situation the dilapidated conditions we face we see in the society the systems are shaking shaken and we are given the responsibility to intercede for the people around whether it is godly grief and worldly grief we are solely responsible for the welfare and for the tranquility of the people who are disturbed because we are the caretakers why God has said cast all your worries upon me I will take care of all your needs so we are the caretakers and we should be responsible for the downfall which is happening in the society and we should be able to make the worldly grief into godly grief david was david found strength in the lord as a result first samuel 30 19 david has recovered everything that was lost david has recovered everything that was lost the chief cup bearer and the baker we draw lessons from them to turn our worldly grief into godly grief and the godly grief leads a person to repentance and further he will have the peace of mind he will be reinstated and the second character expert in the law whether he has godly grief or worldly grief a young man came to jesus thinking that he is as if he is somebody it, he is described in the scripture uh, as a lawyer, expert in the law, a rich man, a ruler, a decision maker. He came to Jesus with a question. He was asking Jesus, what should I do? Was, what Matthew 19, 16, what must I do to inherit everlasting life? I want to have the eternal life. What should I do? What must I do, do to enter into God's kingdom? And then that was his question. And the question he asked has nothing to do with his intention. According to my understanding in the light of the scripture. No doubt because he was pretending and exaggerating as if he is expert in the law. As if he is uh, well versed with everything in the world and he uh, wanted to 
in other way around he wanted to question the integrity of jesus how he tackles okay the twisted mind according to me in the according to the interpretation who he was in the the godly man as if he is a godly man with a godly zeal he just started intro interrogating jesus wanting to know his spiritual status he was expecting jesus to give a very good certificate and um, matthew 7 12 it is written jesus said what do you expect um it's a, another way another way another way of putting the truth truth in our lives what do you do what do you expect from others you do to them what do you expect from others you know, some people say that i have um, asked questions to such man or woman and they were deeply hurt and they were not able to uh, respond so i succeeded i overcame this uh, expert in the law expert he was filled with joy and the uh, the so called joy and happy and after the after conversing jesus his life took a right about that let's see further the question he asked has nothing to do with his intuition and he summed up everything jesus said if you want to if you say what 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 is to be done to inherit the eternal kingdom you just to do you follow what is written in the scripture follow the statutes and ordinances of god law follow the law and the statutes of god he instructed and immediately he said oh i from the beginning i am keeping all such things i am spotless matthew 19 um 1920 all this i have kept he further says what else more to follow see he is pretending himself that he is a righteous man he is ignoring others he is overlooking others he is underestimating others like a pharisaic attitude i have done everything i know everything whereas others do not know and what you tell me what should i inherit what should i do to inherit the eternal kingdom follow the commands i have followed from my child from my childhood now what else more he wanted to picture himself as a righteous person in the presence of the lord he came to that extent and god said um the with it is it it sounds like an arrogant voice god said you want to be if you want to be perfect go and sell your possession the property and give to the poor i have concerned about my people who are struggling in the society i have cons- i have my own concern on the people who are poor spiritually or economically poor people i am going to take side of the poor people so you are exalting yourself you are boasting about something you just if you want to be perfect you wanted to focus on something to be perfect if you want to be perfect go and sell your possession and uh, um what is that go and sell it and distribute it to the poor people Matthew 19:22 This man saddened and went away He was so sad hearing this statement uttered by Jesus go and sell your possession and give it to the poor He was a rich man he was a ruler he was an expert in the law and he he was a man to boast on many things and his his life was completely changed upside down he was so sad and what is happening and he went away he left jesus he left jesus my dear friends the wealth and the self righteousness will lead a person to be sorrowful 
the world is sorrow the the way he followed the laws and statutes and ordinances it it it, it would lead him to be godly to take godly grief in a sense to have burden on the perishing souls around in the society so instead of doing this he did not pull on till last so he wanted to go back so he was so sad because his whole heart and soul was upon was laid upon the worldly things and he was so sad and he left jesus he went away sad the world is sad and the finally the disciples of emmaus these people were filled with the godly grief luke 24 13 to 35 it is written ecclesiastes 7 3 says sorrow is better than laughter sorrow looking so sad it com- it communicates message to the readers of our face so they bible permits looking sorry so- uh, sorrow is grief is better than laughter for a so- sad countenance is <coughs> good for the heart sad countenance is good for the heart sad face is good for the heart some sort of maturity comes from that genesis 47 um why do you look so sad today <clears throat> it is written and psalm 42 5 why are you downcast o my soul after jesus was taken up during his earthly ministry the people who followed jesus they were portraying jesus as the political messiah and they they were intending to have position while jesus become becomes the political messiah ruling over the kingdom and uh, everything has gone within a twinkling of an eye and uh, in their in their eyes jesus was taken up the according to the law of gravitation if you throw a stone in the air it will come down but the divine law surpasses all the earthly law because he is a supernatural god he was taken up he was ta- he was going upward direction and the disciples the dejected disciples who were putting all their trust on jesus the man according to them he is now taken up and they were perplexed they were completely terrified terrified what is going to happen and uh, a cloud hid jesus and they were not able to see jesus who was taken up anymore and they were dejected and at the same time god the father sent angels to comfort these disciples to open his eyes open the eyes of the disciples the same jesus is going to come back the disciples had had grief in their hearts and minds that was the godly grief jesus was with us now where is jesus what will we do we want to see jesus in all the situation if we make our mind to that level of searching god who is jesus like what mary was searching was in search of jesus in the garden so if your if our whole heart is longing to see jesus that worry will be turned into godly grief godly grief leads us to eternal joy in the world and the world to come and these uh, disciples as they were going on the way to emmaus they are going on the road going along the road to towards emmaus and they were talking about jesus ah oh, this jesus we trusted jesus and now jesus is no more and in between hearing this conversation jesus appeared in midst in their midst and said 
and uh, jesus what what did jesus say luke 24:7 jesus asked them why you want to be you want to be so sad why you want to be so sad why your faces are downcast why you are looking looking so sad my dear friends there is the god whom we worship he is the caretaker and he says first peter 5:7 cast all your worries upon me because i cast for i care for you the god who cares for his people let's turn our worldly grief into godly grief and the emmaus is the disciples of emmaus they were comforted by the word of god word of the lord uttered by the risen jesus i am alive why to so why why you want to be so sad i am alive i am i am a living god i am not the god who dead i am the living god since i am alive you don't need to worry you don't i don't want you to be so sad so god is alive the god who we worship is a living god and even in the grief they have exhibited their faith which was on jesus so they have they are going through the faith they they are going through the struggle sorrow even in the sorrow they were longing to see jesus they were talking about jesus the more we talk about jesus definitely our life will be changed we will be transformed and uh, the godly grief led them to see messiah with their opened eyes luke 24:31 yes godly sorrow leads a person to experience the presence of the risen lord yes god who we worship is a caretaker and a caring god let's cast all our worries upon god i psalm 55 22 cast all your burdens upon me i will sustain you i will never allow i will never suffer the righteous to be moved he will never allow the righteous to suffer the sufferings will be um joy our um, sorrow will turn into joy if we trust god as we ought to trust god god is so gracious my dear friends and these are the days evil days the perilous days the last days christ will not uh, make any more delay the time has come the signs and wonders we see in the world and around the world it depicts that christ is going to come to take up the church the bride who are getting ready may god be with us may god turn our all the worldly grief into godly grief ultimately we will um, enter into we will be able to joy to to be filled with joy and glad in the presence of the lord may god be with you may god touch you may god bless you beyond measure amen